All right. You're listening to 91.5 WUML Lowell Blues Deluxe. And it's my distinct pleasure and honor to have my uh, my buddy in the blues, Mr. Tinsley Ellis, on the line with me. Hello, Tinsley. How goes it? It goes it good. It's uh, great to have you on. Um, I know you're in the middle of a tour. The first question I have for you is you were just on a cruise. What was that like after being? You know, we did the blues, the blues cruise. Yeah. Yeah, you were. Uh... Well, all of us couldn't make it on. We we got there and our drummer couldn't get on because he failed the COVID test. He didn't even feel bad or anything. And we gave him two tests and he failed. So we used a substitute drummer. But it was great being at the, you know, on the open seas. A lot of our blues friends out there and great bands and uh, something we look forward to uh, every year or two. Yeah. And. Uh... Last time I had talked to you was at the White Mountain Boogie a few years ago. Right. And um, you were mentioning how you like to do that. You like to collaborate with the other guys that are out there playing because you don't get to see them on a regular basis. Yeah, we even had a horn section on the cruise. We uh, used um, Jimmy Vaughn's horn section was on backing up a few people. And we, we took them on and had a horn section, which was really cool to have that for first time in years and uh, they they knew my stuff uh, inside and out and they knew the blues songs inside out and I had just seen them perform with Jimmy Vaughn opening for Clapton in Atlanta. Wow. Yeah. So you're originally from Atlanta, right? Yeah. Uh, born in Atlanta, raised in South Florida and then back in Atlanta uh, in 1975 and uh, kind of been operating out of Atlanta. A lot of my friends moved to Nashville where the you know, the recording industry is, but I stayed in Atlanta and, uh, you know, and, and uh, operating out of Atlanta and Chicago uh, when I got with Alligator Records t- uh, 34 years ago, operating out of Chicago quite a bit. So when you originally went out on your own, you called yourself Tinsley Ellis and the Hot Fixes. Where did that name Hot Fixes come from? It's an Albert King song, Heart Fixin' Business. And you use that in everything now. I guess your your label when you weren't on a on a label, yeah. the Heart Fixing. Yeah, I got my own a label, Heart Fixer Music. I'm the only artist on the label, but I got a label and <laughs> publishing pump, publishing company is Heart Fixer Music, and um, kind of my name and my business, and uh, and you know I made a deal, a nice deal with Alligator Records a few years ago. I would make the records. Uh, on hard fixer music and they could decide whether they wanted to put them out or not. If they don't like the record or if they don't think it's right for alligator, I put it out myself. So it, it kind of is a nice fit. You've had put out 20 albums from the beginning and yeah. you just had, you just put out a new one, which I love devil oh, make you. devil may care. Yeah. Devil may care. Cause I'm a devil may care chap. <laughs> Anybody who's out on tour or going on the blues cruise with all this stuff going on, it must be devil may care. So I was reading about you um, going out to see BB as as a kid, and oh. uh, he broke a string, and you you still you still have that string. It says I still do. It was a great uh, show. A friend of mine, uh, he and I were listening to records in his room. We were listening to something like uh, Mike Bloomfield Super Sessions or something like that, and. His older brother came in the room and said, I hear you guys getting into this Mike Bloomfield and you're getting into this Peter Green and Eric Clapton and Johnny Winter. There's a guy you got to go see. And we said, who is it we got to go see? And he said, you got to go see B.B. King. So uh, we went to see B.B. King. It was a teen teen matinee. And uh, what that meant is they shut the bar down and just served soft drinks. And the teenager could come in there to the hotel lounge and see Mr. King and his band. And he had a... He had Sonny Freeman on drums, and he had a, a, a local area guy here, up here, uh, Ron Levy on piano. And it was quite a, uh, quite a show, and he greeted us in the lobby and talked to us. And after that, I went to see every blues artist I could see. The next guy I went to see was Howlin' Wolf, and then Muddy Waters. And then I got with Alligator Records and started operating out of Chicago in the 1980s. And got a chance to back up and play with people like uh, 
Buddy Guy and Otis Rush and Albert Collins, Coco Taylor, Sun Seals, Lonnie Mack. Plus, you know, I play with the rock bands too, of course, you know, Allman Brothers Band and Derek Trucks and Government Mule and people like that. So, you know, a good thing about blues rock, you can play both sides of the fence. You can play the blues side of the fence and the rock side of the fence. That's a good thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, all these records uh, you, you recorded on Capricorn, I, I saw for one mm-hmm. one one record, yeah. and then you were on Telarc. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, they they pass me around like a joint. <laughs> <laughs> they have. <laughs> and I remember when I when we were talking at at the uh, White Mountain, you were, you didn't have a deal with anybody. You were re- releasing your own stuff for a while. And you were hoping one of the labels would pick you up again, you were saying at the time. Uh, what year would that have been? Um, 2014 or something. Yeah. Yep. 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, I, I enjoy being my own label. Um, but, you know, there's nothing like the promotional team of Alligator Records. There's nobody like that. And I found that out the hard way, you know, by trying to hire people and they just they don't exist alligators got the the best promotion people in the blues well, let's talk about your guitar you have a special right. gibson guitar that not a lot of people have well i got a, i got a bunch of guitars i'm dragging four around with me on this tour i've got a 1937 national steel that i'm it's over there hopefully in the hotel room there and uh playing that uh, for the acoustic part of the show and I'm playing my 59 Strat. I'm playing my 1967 ES345, a lot like B.B. King's uh, Lucille that he played the first time I went to see him. But I'm also dragging around my uh, Gibson Modern Modern with an E at the end of it and that's my slide guitar. Right, that's the one that's, there's not many of those out there, is there? No, it's often talked about, that's for sure. People always want to talk about, what kind of guitar is that? And I say, well, you know, I want to show them my 59 Strat, but they want to talk about the Modern because it's so funny looking. And it sounds great when you play it, I can tell you that. It's a slide guitar, yeah. It it looks like a, kind of like a, a, a warped version of a Flying V. Well, one of my favorite records that has come out that came out right around the time you and I spoke, well, just that, just before that or right after, Tough Love was one of my favorite records. Yeah, that was a good one. For, and I put that on our Heart Fix for Music. And I, what I would do is I would make an album and um, send it up there to, to Bruce at Alligator. And he kind of liked the instrumental album. He thought that would be a good one for Alligator, but I... I kept it for my own label, and then the next one I did was Midnight Blue, and that had some, you know, different kind of stuff on it. He wasn't really that keen on it, but but Tough Love, he made an offer on that, and I didn't take the offer. I probably should have, and uh, and I said, uh, after I made a couple more albums, I said, if he makes me that offer again, I'm going to take it, so I jumped back on board with uh, uh, Winning Hand, and then did Ice Cream in Hell, and then this new one, uh, Devil May Care, which I think's got a, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's uh, different from the rest of them. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it's kind of more, uh, you know, Almond Brothersy or uh, Derek and the Dominoes. That's, you know, that's kind of my wheelhouse right there, mixing of the rock and roll that's my heritage and the blues that I love. Now, when you re- released Ice Cream in Hell, it was right yeah. in the middle of COVID. Began ending of COVID. It came out like a, the month before. We were we got screwed. Uh, we were on all the way on the West Coast in the middle of a 60 show tour. We did 30 shows. They said, you got to come home. We drove all the way from Northern California to Atlanta, Georgia. I lost my mind. I mean, that's the worst drive of my life. And uh, we had 30 more shows to go and we have been rescheduling those 30 shows We've rescheduled those shows three times now, and and finally uh, the shows that are bringing me to the area at uh, in Natick and, and at the Spire in Plymouth, those shows they they definitely moved around. I mean, we had those scheduled two years ago. Yeah, you're going to be here in a, a week or two. Week next week, something this like that. Weekend. Yeah, this yeah. weekend. Yeah. 
So here's another great question for you. During the time that COVID was around, you you wrote 200 songs. Yeah, they're not all good, but I I wrote 200 songs, and uh, I mean, there's some weird ones in there, and um, and then I, if I got one that I thought would be kind of a house rock and music alligator records type song, I'd email it up there to alligator, and they'd sit around and listen to it and write me back and, and we made this list and we had uh we whittled the 200 songs i probably sent them 100 of the 200 songs and we whittled those down to the best 20 and then we whittled it down to the to 50 minutes which is the amount of time 25 minutes per album side of a vinyl record you can't put any more than that on a vinyl record you shouldn't put any more than that so um yeah, we had, uh, Lord knows I had enough time to do it. Uh, I mean, just kind of like staying home in, in my pajamas for a long time, staring into the abyss, you know, and then having all this time to write music. So how'd you, how did you pick what you were going to, for this new album, how did you pick out of all those songs? Well, I picked... Uh, um so he picks uh he picked three of my picks seven of them and what's going to happen to the remaining song we're going to see them on another record yeah, down the road we will we will because so i i still think that uh um he bumped off my my three of my choices i think those songs would have been great on this album and uh and then there's all the other ones, you know, the slow blues song, traditional blues songs, acoustic songs, instrumental songs, rock songs. Like I got some songs that are almost like, uh, you know, I just, I just love ZZ Top and some of the songs lean towards that, you know, more, more towards rock than blues. So uh, we came up with a, mix, with a mixture. Good. Yeah. It- it says that you uh, set up all your instruments while while you were at COVID, and and you you tried all kinds of things. Yeah, Play. and my amplifiers and electric piano and effects pedals, and I put every guitar I own down in my basement, set them all up in it, like in a circle, with all my amplifiers and Leslie cabinet and Wurlitzer electric piano and Echoplex. I had all that stuff around all around me, and uh. I just reach for them and, and write songs with them. And, uh, I haven't, you know, I've never been able to do that. I hadn't been able to do that since like high school, which is a long ass time ago. And, um, and basically, uh, I had all that stuff at my, you know, disposal and I, I made use of it. And, and now I've, I've taken those, to, about half of that stuff down and it, I'm dragging it around the country with me. What was that like to have to, to do that all of a sudden when you're on, constantly on the road supporting all your music and you have to stop yeah. completely what was that like for you well it was a you know it was a trip in itself i mean 40 years 40 plus years non-stop from 1979 when i graduated from college to uh 2020 when the, the rug was yanked out from underneath me and i had to had to adapt you know and uh so it was a trip. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of stuff I didn't miss. I mean, because there's a lot of BS that goes along with uh, having a road band, you know, personalities and the travel and the hotels and the gas prices and all that. I didn't miss any of that one bit. But I did miss the making the music part and, and hanging out with friends all over the world. Where's your favorite place to play in the world? Oh, boy, that's a tough one, huh? Well, you know, there's nothing like a hometown crowd. In Atlanta, we kicked off this new album with two shows in one night at the Atlanta City Winery. And um, uh, half the people, half the fans didn't, that didn't go, they didn't go because they uh, afraid to go because COVID was, is going on. So half the fans were afraid to, and the other half, half didn't like the mask mandate. So <laughs> double-edged sword, you know, and... But we had a couple of good turnouts, and uh, but nothing like we used to. And you know, down in Georgia, people don't like to be told what to do. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> the Devil May Care is the new record. It just came out, and tell me a little bit about the making of that record. 
Well, went to uh, went to Nashville with my studio musicians and and um, laid down a whole bunch of live stuff, and then I took back the um, the tapes, the hard drive back to Atlanta in my studio, and listened to everything I recorded, and fixed a little bit of the guitar playing, and fixed just a little bit of the singing pick the best performances and then send it back up there to Nashville to get mixed and mastered. So I've been doing it like that for about 10 years now. And Alligator does have input into that. You, you send it to them as well, yes. Bruce. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we, you know, he has input in the mixing and song selection. He knows what he's doing. He's right most of the time. That's good. Good to hear. He, he, he's right. Most, yeah, he's got a, I mean, the man's been in business over 50 years now. Yeah. And uh, put out some, uh, you know, blues classics. You know, everybody wants to talk about chess records and stacks and stuff, but they, you know, they came and went in, you know, maybe 15, 20 years. And here you got a man that's done it for over 50 years and shows no sign of slowing down. No, he's, I interviewed him. A few months ago, and he's not giving it up. He's keep he's going to no. keep going forever until he can't. That's what he basically said. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of energy, and uh, he's uh, out there right now signing some new bands. I'm not allowed to say who, but it's it's pretty exciting stuff. And he's got you. What he's more? Got me. What more can he ask? Right? He's got you. Yeah, I've got more. Uh, I got more records out on Alligator than anybody at this point. So that's kind of an honor. And I'm not even, you know, I'm kind of hanging off the fringe of uh, of being blues anyway, because I'm more of like a rock and roller that loves blues. And uh, so that's kind of cool that uh, he had open, open ears. I remember back in 1988, he said I was the first artist to ever use a wah-wah pedal on Alligator Records. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this past weekend, I played 28 Days from the new record, and I played Seven Years. Oh, yeah. Right. Two great two great songs. Yeah, two great songs that mac, uh, mark the passing of time. One of them is short amount of time, 28 days, and the other one's a long amount of time, seven years. So, uh, you know, I'm a, a singing calendar sometimes, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, I, uh, 28 Days is one of the songs that Bruce picked for the album. And we do that song live. It goes over great. And Slow Train to Hell, the week before, I played that one. Yeah, that was I picked that song, and we do that one live as well, too. So when, I'm, when we're done with this interview, I'm going to play the whole album in its entirety right after the interview, wow. just so you know. Well, that's excellent. And that's what I've done all these years, just so you know that. I appreciate it. I promote new records that come out in its entirety. I don't play one or two songs. I play the whole thing so that the listening audience gets a flavor of who you are and what yeah. the record is about. Just like the old days. Right, like FM radio used to be. Same, I same used to thing. Put my tape, I used to put my cassette deck on, set it up when people would play the album and, and uh, yeah, record on the on yeah. cassette tape, the album. Of course, it sounded like crap but i mean i recorded those albums and uh and then i would go out and buy the the real album you know once i yeah saved up enough money washing dishes you know to do that uh you'd be surprised but, uh, how many yeah. people our age are still doing that listening to my show well you can you know i mean i people trade tapes of me you know cds of me around and nothing i can do about it i just hope that they sound good yeah they sound great your your cds always sound great Thank you, my friend. And uh, I really appreciate all the, you know, the time that you've taken. We had a little glitch in doing this interview. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that we were able to get it done. And yeah. can you, you know, I tell the listening audience how they can find your music. I know you have well, a website. It's TinsleyEllis.com, right? Lost you for a second. Do it, uh, to get, yeah, and of course, there's Facebook too. You know, yep. uh, all over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Right down the road, just tweeting out tweets right and left. 
you're you're on all of those. That's good. I I do. I don't know which one of them works, so I better just do all of them, right? <laughs> and you're going to be here in town on uh, this weekend. Yeah, on, on a, well Thursday I'll be in um, uh, Natick. Yeah, Tcan. Yeah, the uh, Center for the Arts on Thursday night. That's a school night, but we're starting kind of early. And um, and then Friday, that will be down there on the the, the Spire coast, Center, right? The Spire Center on Friday, and then and then we go from there over to uh, over to uh, Saratoga Springs and Connecticut, and we go back home for a few days. Then we hit the West Coast, the Midwest, and the West Coast. So we're we're, we're touring like teenage idiots out there, you know, going everywhere we can, you uh, know. How about the I festivals? Can... You're going to be playing some of the festivals coming up? Yeah, we got the uh, North Atlantic Blues Festival with Tommy Castro. Oh, that's and up in that... Maine. Yep. Oh, it's a great one, a really great one. And, uh, and Chicago Blues Festival, if they ever get their schedule together. I mean, that's a date that was booked in 2020, and then they didn't have it. 2020 they didn't have in 2021 so they're still holding on to my booking there and so hopefully this year they'll have we'll be at the chicago blues festival i've been trying for that for like 40 years all right well i'm gonna let you get back because you got more interviews to do i just well, want to say to you my friend and same thank here you for, thank you for supporting the music and i hope i get to shake your hand in person someday you will you have I'll tell you a real quick story about the right. last time we met. Okay. You were taking strings off your guitar. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, back back there behind the stage. Right, and you handed me the strings, and I took all of them. Oh, I and, don't remember that part. And but I, I put them. Remember <clears throat> being back there. Yeah, you you told me that you you take your strings off every night. Yeah. For, for the next day, and when you were putting the new strings on I put the old strings in the in the in the in the uh, cases you gave me and I took them with me and I had you autograph them all right I, I kind of remember that but yeah. I do remember being backstage there the fabulous Thunderbirds were on that show yeah and uh some other people I can't remember who else but that's a heck of a festival there that white mountain blue boogie, boogie and blues yeah oh yeah that's a, that's a great that's one of the best kept secrets in America right there there you go people, camp, people camping out there and it'd be like 100 degrees down in Georgia and it'd be nice and cool up there in the mountains <laughs> well again thank you very much I really well, appreciate thank you for it. having me my friend and I look forward to seeing you hopefully this summer somewhere you will thank you take, take care take care